I hope you all are having a great day. This will be episode 6 from my weekly podcast. This episode is called Journey to the Underworld, Introducing Solotl. I hope you have been enjoying these stories and if you have depending on what platform you are on, please feel free to like, comment, share or even check out my book by the link in the description. During the time of the fifth sun, the gods gathered around each other amazed at the beauty of the renewed world they created. From corner to corner of the plain, the world is magnificent. The oceans are a piercing dark blue, touching the lighter blue sky, gives visual comfort to the eyes. The green lush forest from up above looks like something you can eat from a vegetable garden. One of the gods in the back said, The world looks great, but something is missing. Another god from the back said, What is missing? Quetzalcoatl yelled out, Life, life is missing. Another god said, all the humans died in the floods. All the gods started to deliberate. The gods wanted to have people inhabit the world. They wanted people to worship them. They needed people to run the world. They decided to send Quetzalcoatl and his twin Solotl to Mictlan to retrieve the bonus of the people from the fourth Sun. Mictlan is the underworld and the place of the deed. Solotl is Quetzalcoatl's twin. He is a dog-like creature who helps guide the sun and every deing creature to the underworld. Solot said, I am the evening star and I lead the sun every night to die in the underworld. So I know the way. Quetzalcoatl exclaimed after, I am the morning star and I lead the sun to be reborn every day. So I know the path to get out of the underworld. Quetzalcoatl followed Solotl and Zolotl followed the sun's path to the underworld. They had to travel through the nine levels of the underworld. In the first part of their journey, they have to cross the Apanohuaya River, which runs in pitch black darkness. Once they crossed the river, they finally approached Miktekakihuatl, pronounced Mikdotitilaenigitkikuotitli, who is the king of Mictlan. Mictlantekutli is a skeletal figure wearing a skull mask and carrying a staff or a spear. He was alongside his wife, Miktekachiwatl, pronounced Mikte Kezi Waspasitl. Her name translates to Lady of the Dead or Lady of the Underworld. She is a skeletal figure with a skirt of bones. Quetzalcoatl announced to them, I come in search of some precious bones in your possession. The bones I need are from the people of the past. The king said, What do you need these for? God said, The gods and I are anxious to have people inhabit the world and worship us. The king said, Go and do as you please, but be aware this won't be easy. My kingdom is not made to go back from. When you reach your precious bones, you must sound out with this horn. The king threw a massive conch shell to the gods. Quetzalcoatl and his twin went on their way. Quetzalcoatl was thinking to himself, What did he mean? I created the world, and nothing can stop me. I just need to toot this big horn, and I will be on my way back. Quetzalcoatl said to his twin, He, I, he tricked us. This shell is worthless. It has no holes to blow and make a sound. That bony king isn't going to stop me that easy. So... Quetzalcoatl called upon the worms, I order you to drill holes in the shell. Then he called upon the bees, through the holes, I order you to toot this horn until I pick up all the bones. The bees started tooting and Miklantekutli could hear the sounds from the horn. The king then said to his spirits, Those gods are smarter than they look. I want you to start digging holes to stop him from leaving the kingdom. Quetzalcoatl gathered all the bones as the bees tooted the horn swiftly. Quetzalcoatl said to his twin, Follow me. I know the way back as I guide the sun every early dawn to rise and shine. Swiftly the gods made their way back. While running back, Quetzalcoatl tripped and fell into one of the recently dug holes. Upon his fall he let go of all the bones. Zolotl heard a crunch and breaking of the bones. 
Quetzalcoatl looked in shock at all the scattered broken bones and said, Oh no, they are ruined. What do we do now? So little said, They might still work. We just have to hope for the best and still try to make it work. So Total helped his twin pick up the bones, and then they continued on their journey. They brought the bones to the gods and quickly started to perform rituals. Since the bones were all different shapes and sizes, the Mechehuales were all different shapes and sizes. Mechehuales is a word out of the Nahuatl language, meaning those that have gained through divine sacrifice. Quetzalcoatl and his twin's journey are a story of perseverance and never giving up on your goals no matter what obstacles you encounter. In this story, we are introduced to a new character from the plethora of Aztec gods. This god is named Zolotl. He is often depicted as a dog-headed god or a man with prominent canine features. Zolotl played various roles in Aztec cosmology and religion. Zolotl was associated with death and the evening star. Zolotl was often considered a guide for the souls of the deceased, helping them navigate the perilous journey to the afterlife. Zolotl was also associated with Venus, which was the evening star in Mesoamerican astronomy. This connection with Venus added to his role as a god of twilight, and the evening which, in turn, had connotations with the underworld and the realm of the dead. Twin brother of Quetzalcoatl, Zolotl was often regarded as the twin brother of Quetzalcoatl, one of the most important deities in Aztec mythology. Quetzalcoatl represented life, creation, and the morning star, while Zolotl was associated with death and the evening star. This duality of life and death was a fundamental aspect of Aztec cosmology. God of Twins Zolotl had an association with twins, which was significant in Aztec culture. Twins were considered to have a special spiritual significance, and Zolotl was sometimes seen as a protector of twins or as a deity who could help with the safe birth of twins. Guide to the Underworld Zolotl was often depicted as a shapeshifter with the ability to transform into various forms, including a dog or a monster. He was considered a guide and companion to the souls of the deceased on their journey to the underworld, which was known as Mictlan. It was believed that he could lead the souls through the dangers and challenges they would face in the afterlife. Venus, the Evening Star Zolotl's association with Venus, particularly as the evening star, was prominent in Aztec astronomy and mythology. Venus was seen as a celestial body with dual aspects representing both the morning and evening stars. Zolotl embodied the aspect of Venus as the evening star, which was often linked to the setting sun and the descent into the underworld. Ritual Sacrifice Zolotl was sometimes invoked in Aztec rituals, particularly those related to death and sacrifice. His role in guiding souls to the underworld was crucial, and he was honored in ceremonies related to the deceased, which often included offerings and rituals to ensure a safe journey to the afterlife. In some depictions, he was shown with a staff or a torch to symbolize his role as a guide through the darkness of the underworld. Regional Varietians. It's important to note that there were regional Varietians in the worship and interpretation of Xolotl, as the Aztec civilization encompassed different regions and city states each with its own religious practices and beliefs. Therefore, the details of Xolotl's mythology and significance may have varied in different parts of the Aztec Empire. Zolotl had a complex and multifaceted character, and his symbolism and significance in Aztec mythology evolved over time. He was both a deity of transformation and a guardian of souls, and his role in mythology reflected the Aztec worldview, where life and death were interconnected and cyclical. I hope you have been enjoying these stories, 
And if you have, depending on what platform you are on, please feel free to like, comment, share, or even check out my book by the link in the description.